In section 10.1, we're going to look at specifically the areas of parallelograms and triangles. In this section, we're also going to look at irregular figures. Now, when we're looking at the formula for the area of a parallelogram, we have our basic area equals length times width that most of you should be familiar with for any sort of rectangle. Now, if we look at a parallelogram, though, as we have here, a parallelogram is really just a rectangle. We've basically taken this piece here from our rectangle and we cut it off and we slid it. So when I have a parallelogram, if I really wanted to, I could take that triangular piece off and I could slide it back to the other side to complete my rectangle again. So really, if I'm looking at any parallelogram, my formula is going to be the same as it is for a rectangle. So I have area equals length times width, or area equals base times height is my formula for a parallelogram. So let's look at an example here. Our first example we have, we're given this parallelogram. They give us some different lengths, some widths, some measurements. But what's important to us is our base and our height. Now, my height is right here going through my parallelogram. It must be a perpendicular height which is perpendicular distance of four inches in this case. So when I plug these things into my formula, I have area equals the base that I have to use is five inches because that is the base that is involved with my four inch height. So I have area equals five times four is 20 and inches times inches becomes inches squared. So whenever we have an area, we will always have squared units. In this case, my answer is area equals 20 inches squared. Then I also have a U try there for you to do. So do that and please bring that with you to class. Now for problems where you're looking for a missing dimension, you have to think a little bit differently. You need to set up some sort of equation with some unknown. So if we think about area, whether I calculate area with this base and this height, or if I calculate it with this base and this height, I should get the same amount of area. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up an equation and I'm gonna set those two different areas equal to each other. Um, I'm gonna calculate first using my base being dA and my height has to be a perpendicular height to that, which instead of drawing within this parallelogram, they've drawn it off here to the side, but we have to recognize that this is still the height compared to this side here. So my area, if I use those two segments, is going to be base of 13 inches times my height of nine inches. But I know that that's gonna be equal to my area if I calculate it with AB being my base and DE being my height. So that must be equal to 9.4 inches times I'm gonna put DE right there so that we remember we have to solve for DE. Okay, so I multiply my 13 times nine and I get 117 squared inches. That has to be equal to 9.4 times DE inches squared. So I'm gonna divide that 9.4 to the other side so I can get my DE by itself. And when I do that, I get DE is equal to 12.45 inches. So to recap, what I did is I took my two different ways I can solve for the area of this parallelogram. First I said DA is my base and FC is my height. Then I said that would have to be the same as if I made AB my base and DE my height. I set up my equation, I divided by my 9.4 to get DE by itself, and I ended up with my value of DE equals 12.45. So here's a U try problem similar to the one that was given to you in the example. All right, for area of a triangle, this one should be familiar to you. Area equals one half base times height, no matter what type of triangle you have. Your height may be one of the legs if it's a right triangle. Your height may be outside of the triangle if it's an obtuse. And if it's acute like this, your height will be in the middle of the triangle. So 
So looking at this first example, I have a right triangle, which means my height is going to be one of the legs. So I'm going to set up my formula. Area equals one half. My base here is going to be one foot. And my height is going to be five inches. Now the problem though is we now have different units. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to change this. I'm going to rewrite my equation. Area equals one half. I'm going to change that one foot to 12 inches so that then I can put my five inches in and we have the same units. So area equals one half of 60 inches. Oops, and that should be inches squared. I apologize for that. Inches times inches is going to be inches squared. So my area is 30 squared inches. Here's a you try problem for you to do. It's a word problem with a given picture. So go ahead, do that and bring that to, with you to class. And now the last thing we're going to look at is trying to find the area of an irregular shape. So with an irregular shape, we're going to just break it into two pieces that we know we can find the areas of, and we're going to add those areas together. So in this first example, we've got a square and a triangle. So I'm just going to find the area of each of those and then add them together. So let's start with the square. I'm going to put a little square there next to area so I remember that's what I'm dealing with. My length is 6, or my base. My height is also 6 inches because it is a square. So I know the area of my square is 36 inches squared. And I also have the area of my triangle. And that's going to be 1 half base. Well, my base is this piece right here which is part of that square, which means it's six. So one half, six inches times my height, which is right here, eight inches. So area equals one half of 48 inches squared, which is 24 inches squared. Now I have to take these two areas and I need to add them together. So I get the area of this figure is equal to 36 inches squared plus 24 inches squared, which gets me area equals 60 inches squared. You go ahead and do that. You try and bring it with you to class.